and we're going to start off with the motherboard right here. You always want to prep your motherboard before you put it inside the case. And you can see right here, I have a cardboard surface. Uh, cardboard surface is okay to use. This motherboard does come with uh, the Wi-Fi antenna right here. And this is a AMD A5 motherboard, so this is the uh, Ryzen processor that we're going to be using. This is a Ryzen uh, 7700X. You know, you want to make sure that you hold on to whatever you find with the motherboard. Especially if you have like uh, these right here. These are M.2 screws. You don't want to lose these. Because if you lose them, uh, you might have to track more down online. But don't lose these. Set them to the side inside the box. If you have anything on your motherboard, such as this, like plastic, you want to peel that off. Because you don't want to generate any heat. You know, get all that stuff off. And uh, this one supposedly uses... AM5 uses... Um, the same exact coolers as um, what you would normally use with the uh, AM4. So they, they're backwards compatible with the uh, AM4 coolers. Now there's a few things I want to point out here. I've been build building computers for a long time. And uh, currently it's still something I do on a daily basis. It's something I do quite a bit. So I'm going to point out a few things here for you guys. Alright, so first off. If you're new to building computers, we're just going to start off with the basics. There's a little indicator right here on uh, these uh, DDR4 and DDR5 motherboards that will indicate which two slots of RAM to use first. And you see the little notch right there pointing towards the DIMM slots listed like B1 and B2. This is actually B A2 and B2 that you have to use first. You can see that right there. So whenever you build the computer, just take note of that. It's going to be these two slots right here. Uh, the, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to seat the processor in. So you want to get this off. This is a temporary thing right here. So we're going to pop this off here. And uh, these new AMD processors, uh, they have contacts on the bottom of the pins. The, uh, the older AMD processors had actual pins on them there's, there's gonna be a little arrow pointing in this direction right here uh, each motherboard's or each socket's a little different I guess so uh, depending on if you have an Intel or an AMD there will be a little indicator in one of these corners of how to position your processor when you insert it now in this processor the indicator is right here and we can zoom in down there you guys can probably see that a little bit better. Let me see if we can show you guys. All right, you see that little notch right there? That's what we're talking about. All right, so as you can see, if you look at all four corners on the processor, this right here is the indicator. You can see it right there. So that has to be positioned just like that. Yeah, let's get that in there. A Ryzen AM5 processor, and you can see the contacts on the bottom. It's like an Intel, it's weird. These are usually what Intel processors look like. No pins. All right, so it's gonna drop in just like that. And there's also little notches right here that prevent you from inserting it incorrectly. But for now, we're going to insert the M.2 slot right here. All right. This thermal pad has a film on it. You have to peel off first before you put it back on. So this film right here comes off. All right. We're going to leave it there for now until we get the M.2 in there. But before you screw this back on, you peel this off. All right, so we're gonna get our uh, brackets for the liquid cooler pretty much ready. And you wanna make sure you pick out the correct hardware components, or the hardware accessories. Uh, this is an AM5 motherboard, but you know the AM4 is the bag you wanna look for because it's compatible with AM5. So we're gonna be using this. 
Uh, this is a Corsair liquid core. Uh, these little pegs right here actually screw in in the place of these screws, but you remove these brackets, so we're going to do that. Your safe bet is to stick with the Corsair. Uh, they, they're pretty decent. When you take these off, do not throw them out. Save them. Save them with uh, all your leftover uh, motherboard components and accessories. If you throw these out, uh, it's, these are very, very important to hold on to just in case you change your cooler. Or let's say if you want to build a new machine, you want to use the same liquid cooler or something, you want to put these back on, just hold on to these, trust me. Even though I've been building computers for 20 years, I can still make mistakes. Uh, but you don't want to take the chances of doing something, you know, risky on your motherboard or anything like that. You know, once you do get your computer built, one thing for sure that I'm that's set against is overclocking. You don't want to overclock your computer either, so. Alright, the RAM that we picked out for the motherboard. It's a Corsair RAM. Uh, we got DDR5, 32 gigs per box. We have four sticks total. Uh, don't apply pressure inserting the RAM until you know for sure that it's being inserted properly. Like right here, this looks correct. All right, so once you match up the notches and everything, let's see if we can, so you guys can see this a little bit better here. All right. We want to apply pressure here and then snap it into place. All right, so there we go. Your RAM will not work if you don't push it in all the way. Yeah, I know sometimes it is scary if you're just first time building a computer. If it's your first time. And also, I just noticed your RAM, some of them might have a little plastic film on it. Like this right here, you don't want to keep that on there. That's not good. This is how I build a computer. Now, you guys can insert that RAM afterwards, before, however you wish to do it. Uh, this is my preference, pretty much what I like to do. Uh, you guys are welcome to do it however you want, but I've been building computers for a while and I just, I prefer to prep the motherboard before we insert it inside the case. This is my preference, something that I personally like to do. All right, let's get the uh, glass portion of this off. It's probably best to set the glass portion to the side somewhere. You don't want it to get damaged or anything. Some sort of plastic film on the front and back. Uh, remove the one that's on the inside. If you want to keep the one on the outside on still, this has a film on it. If you want to keep it on, that's up to you. It's not going to hurt the computer. But the one on the inside you want to take off. So here's the motherboard right here. All right, the motherboard's in place. Now you can see, let's zoom in here. Where the motherboard is, we'll zoom out just a little bit here so you guys can see a little bit better. All right, so there's gonna be various different screw holes right here. And underneath this motherboard, I'm gonna pick this up for a second. There's pegs, these little pegs right here. And these pegs need to line up with your motherboard holes. Now I've built many, many, many computers. And I've also fixed a lot of computers for people where the pegs are not lined up properly. Uh, they attempted to build a computer and they, they, they uh, for some reason, they just put the motherboard on a peg bare against the motherboard on the back and they just did not move the pegs. There's a little holes right here. So you have to use like a little pair of pliers, unscrew the peg, and move the peg over if you have to. Measure your holes, do whatever you have to do. Get these aligned properly before you do anything. If you mess this up, uh, you're going to mess your motherboard up. In my case, these are aligned properly. So I don't have to worry about much here. 
All right, these screws right here, these are the ones you want to use right here. If you guys can see that or not. I'll probably take it out so you guys can see it better, but yeah, those are the ones you want to use. Okay. That's the one right there. So when you screw your motherboard in, that's it right there. That's what you want to use. That's the motherboard screw. It works perfect with your pegs. Uh, I see some people using power supply screws on their motherboard. And you know, that can definitely work. But these are made for your motherboard, just so you know. And when you screw this in, don't tighten the motherboard too much. Just screw it in enough that it's in there. Let it be a little bit loose. Nothing like too crazy. Like you see, right there, it's tightened enough. It's, you don't want to tighten it too much. All right. I mean, we're looking pretty good here. Just, you know, do a quick scan over the motherboard first before you do anything else. Uh, the next thing I usually prefer to do before you mount the liquid core and put the power supply in is you probably want to wire up the motherboard to your uh, front panel and all that stuff first. The reason why is because sometimes when you insert or you know you screw in the power supply it's probably very difficult to uh, run the cable in to your pins afterwards so you want to do that now before uh, you know things get a little too out of control so I'm gonna do that right now all right so here we are folks this is a uh, power switch jumper you guys can see that probably a little bit closer let's zoom in here uh, apparently this case only has a power switch jumper. Normally cases have a reset switch, power lights, you know, power LEDs, whatever you want to call it. They probably have a couple of jumpers, maybe two or three. Uh, this case has a power switch jumper and uh, it has a couple of other things here too, probably like for audio, HD audio, the front panel and all that stuff. And this is hard to do on camera, so I'm trying to do this the best I can here. All right, woke up the, uh, the power jumper first. All right, here we go, power jumper. There's a front panel, pins down here in the bottom. You have to look at the diagram at the bottom. Let's see if we can zoom in on that for a sec. This is where your front panel pins are right here. And over to the side, there's a little diagram that tells you, uh, like, speaker connector, uh, there's a power LED, power switch, uh, HD, LED, reset, power LED, all that, you know, all that stuff. In our case, the only thing we have to plug in is the power switch. That's the only thing we have for this, uh, specific case right here. So the power switch should be, uh, these two pins right here based off of that diagram is it says power switch on the top so I'm very certain that that's where we're gonna go the first two switches are um, power LED so here we got the power switch all right here we go all right that's hooked up it's a little hard to film this when you don't have a lot of surface, but I'm gonna get these all hooked up for you guys. And this is for front panel audio. You don't wanna hook that up just like that. And again, hook all this stuff up before you put your power supply in. Trust me, because if you don't, it's gonna be hard. All right, the next thing that I wanna do here is remove the fans. Uh, the reason why I wanna remove the fans, I will save them for another build but I want to remove them because I want to use Corsair fans what these uh, screws look like these are screws all right let's see if we can focus here these are uh, case fan screws all right so when you remove screws from the front of the case you want to be careful we want to make sure that you pull the case off properly there might be a little clamps on the inside that you have to push in in order to pull the case out. 
in this case you just have to pull it out like this so be careful you don't want to break anything and it is possible to break the front of the case and there we go this is the front of the case you put that over to the side and we have for some reason all right this part must come out here it's screwed from the inside which is a little weird I get that the uh, that the fans are on the outside of the case like I, obviously I can see that but usually there's a different way of doing this like the usually there's a front panel that would come off if they're screwed from the inside but this is a weird one so luckily we didn't put too much in here So what we'll do is we will get these screws out and we will take our time. We're just going to have to do it like this. And I plan on putting the liquid cooler in the front. I prefer the liquid cooler to be in the front of the case instead of the top. Uh, I think that if we put the liquid, the liquid cooler in the front with the airflow going in that direction out of the case, it's better than having uh, all the heat from the GPU and the CPU blowing upwards towards the liquid cooler going out. It's the radiator. Uh, I don't think the radiator is the hottest component inside the actual case. I think the uh, processor that generates the heat here in the GPU is definitely much hotter. So you don't want to have heat from the GPU and the processor rise up towards the radiator and fans blowing all that heat through the radiator. That, to me, that doesn't make any sense. So I prefer to have the radiator in the front and all the air blowing from the outside through the radiator going out of the case that way. Some people do it in the top of the case or, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a personal preference to be quite, quite honest. But I'm going to remove these fans and we'll start getting the uh, liquid core inside the case. I'll see you guys in a little bit here. All right, as you can see here, we got most of our fans out. We just got to pull a couple more out in the front. Those fans are perfectly fine. You can use them if you want. Um, there's nothing wrong with them, but we're definitely going to save them for backup fans. Uh, these fans are... Let's see if we can just get these out here. Let's lift up on the cables a little bit so they don't get tied up. All right. Yeah, these have RGB connectors to them. So these are definitely um, fractal RGB fans, but we're gonna be uh, using Corsair liquid core and the Corsair fans and we're going to be placing those around the case in various different places you know what i might do depending on how many fans i have i actually might put hmm, the liquid core is definitely going to go in the front i might actually put fans on both sides of the liquid core uh, I, i'm going to definitely plan this out i'm going to definitely make this work somehow but I think I have enough fans to make this work. So I can probably put four fans in front, two fans on the top and one fan back here. So a total of uh, seven fans, I guess. Let's see if we can, we, let's see if we can make that happen. All right, so before we put the liquid core inside the case, we need to prep that liquid core. And you guys have to understand how fans work and how the airflow is. So uh, what fans, there's two sides of the fan, obviously, as you can see right here. There's the part that has the blades on it, and there's the part that has like the plastic little fixtures right here. Uh, where the plastic fixtures are right here, on this side, the air blows out. So, the fan spins and blows the air out in that direction. So if we turn this around, the air is actually blowing inwards, going out this way. So the way you want to set your computer up is when you build a computer, you want to mount your fans probably like this, having air blowing out that direction. 
and you also want to mount them all in the same direction also. And on the top, you want to have your fins mounted in this direction, blowing out. You never want to have your fins mounted this way, blowing in on the top. That makes no sense. Uh, that's definitely trapping your heat inside your case. You don't want to do that. Let's get these on there and see what happens. So I'm going to pause the video for a second. I'm going to see if I can get these screwed on. And then from there, uh, I'm going to try to get mounted on the case with no issues and see what happens here. All right, so we have the uh, fans, the interior fans screwed on to the, the uh, liquid core. When you screw the fans on here, you want to make sure that the uh, screws are not too tight. Once again, just like the motherboard. You just want to screw them on just enough that they're on there. You don't want to strip anything or do anything crazy like that. And uh, basically, I'm going to keep this bag on temporary for now. Now the cables, you want to fish through the case over on the side right here. Uh, over on the side is where all the cable is going to go through. And it's probably, on your case, you're going to have probably one or two openings on the little side of where the, this is being mounted. If, there, if there's no, no opening on the side, then that's kind of weird. Though. Most modern cases have a little teeny like, small little opening on the side. So let's get that over there, fish through, and then your best bet is to pull it through on the other side. So let's get this in here. It's okay to stand it up like that for now. That's not going to hurt anything. Get these pulled through. And once you pull them through here, I'm going to probably turn this around for you guys so you guys can see it a little bit better. And I want to mount it up as high as possible here, so probably right there. And the way that we're going to mount this is you have to push the screw through here on each hole right here. You're going to mount one fan first. So we're going to have to turn this around here for a second so we can see this a little bit better here. And there we go. We made contact right there. So we're pretty good. We don't have to worry about it. We're going to lift it up as high as we possibly can here. And we can lower it down for a second. All right. So the way this is going to work is we're going to have to mount it probably right there, unfortunately, because if we lift this up, it looks like, well, we can probably get away with doing it there. But the way the holes are in this case, it's probably wanting us to mount the liquid core right here around this area because we have to actually match these little holes up with the opening of the case right here so we can't go too crazy with mounting it too low so your best bet is to mount the fan that's diagonal on the other side and once you get this one mounted you're pretty much safe you don't have to go crazy or do anything but and uh, these two screws will hold everything in for now and make things easier so once again, mount the top fan first, uh, for each corner, and everything's in there good enough that it's not going to go anywhere. All right, so always have your cables facing the direction where the hole is. Right there, that's good. You always pay attention to where the hole is. And we have four more screws to work with here. Now, if the, if the holes on your fans are a little bit wider, usually you have washers you can also use along with your screws, but you know, in this case, they're not needed. All right, so we got most of our fans screwed in here, uh, but I just want to remind you of something here. We don't have the top two in there yet. Now, before you screw those two top fans in there, you want to probably put your power supply in first and fish your CPU cabling all the way through and get all that stuff taken care of first uh, before you mount those two fans. So do that first. All right, as you can see here, we're using the 850 watt Corsair power supply. And uh, this is what we're gonna be mounting inside the computer. All right, here's the back of the case. I'm gonna give you guys the heads up. Before you actually put this inside your case, make sure you hook up every necessary cable that you need first before you wire it, uh, screw it inside your case. Uh, because if you don't, it's very, very difficult to actually 
get your hands in there and start plugging things in afterwards. So get all that stuff hooked up first, then put it inside your case, screw it in into the back, and uh, get everything all situated. Uh, so far this is coming along quite well. And uh, the power supply matches the case, which is nice. So uh, this build, you can see right here, this is what we have going on so far. And uh, you see that the CPU cabling right here, I might switch that around a little bit here. The good thing is I can actually fish my hand into it. It's not terrible. Uh, I'm trying to see what we got here. All right, this is good. This is for your PCI Express, your video card. I'm assuming that we only need one of those. So we're not gonna go crazy on that. Now, the next thing I would probably want to work on in a moment is probably the fan hubs, but I would like to actually mount the actual cooler onto the CPU. All right, the first thing I want to do is take the bag off of this liquid cooler that we have here, and there is going to be, uh, just so you guys can see here, uh, there is going to be a thermal piece here. I want to zoom out here so you can see this a little bit better. All right. So that thermal piece, you can use that if you want. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, but I don't want to use that thermal piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that thermal piece. I'm going to put this back on here for right now. For the time being. And so it doesn't get anywhere. I'm going to set it down and uh, the way you want to remove the thermal paste is you can just use a simple paper towel and some rubbing alcohol. All right, paper towel, rubbing alcohol. It's going to come off just like that. Just keep cleaning it off. And you can know, use the other side too if you have to. I like to put a couple of dots here and there, like you know, carefully put a little dot there. The reason why I, I'm doing this is because if you just put one piece size dot directly in the center, you're not going to get full coverage. And that's basically what you want to do is you want to get full coverage. You don't want to have a portion of the processor to be covered and have the exterior of it not be covered. So on this processor, I think you want to be a little careful because it has openings on the side. So you don't want thermal piece to go down in the openings. I can see that that would be very, very much of a pain they asked to clean out so you don't want to be doing that and what i'm going to do is i'm going to wiggle this around a little bit here like that you guys can see that i'm going to try to wiggle it around just a little bit here and it's okay to lift this up and see what kind of spread you have now that looks like it's too much too little so it doesn't look like there's enough thermal paste on here there's a little bit on the um the heat sink so we're gonna add a little bit more here is there's not enough coverage and I will tell you when there's enough coverage from experience I put a little dab in the center not, not a lot I prefer to put little teeny dabs here and there put a little bit there put a little bit there not, not a lot you don't want to do a lot just want to take your time doing this you don't want to do a whole bunch of it all at once. There's a little bit here and there, right? In the center, even that little amount that I put in the center looks potentially too much for me, but... Alright, let's try this out. Alright, let's get this on here and try to spread it around a little bit. I don't want to make it mess either, so... I'm gonna try to whip my hand off here. 
I'm pretty confident that this is enough. Probably a little bit more than enough. You don't want to put too much, like I said. But you want to wiggle it around like that. It's, you don't want to apply pressure too much. Just wiggle it around. All right, now lift it up. And that looks pretty good. It honestly looks like a little bit too much, in my opinion. And there we go. We got coverage. Uh, to me, that looks okay. And if you can, turn it around the other direction also like this, if possible. If your cooler allows you to. And also, spread it around in that direction as well so you can get as much full coverage as possible. Lift it up. And that looks okay to me. Alright, that's the best we're going to get for this cooler, so we're going to mount it here. And it's in there, it's, it feels pretty good, so... We're going to keep it like that. I think that's enough. If you only have a piece size in the center and it only spreads out only so far, you're going to have problems on the edge of your processor where your thermal paste is going to dry up faster because it's going to heat from the outside in. These are multi-core processors. You don't want to have that problem. So uh, the next thing that we're going to be doing is adding uh, a secondary SSD in there. And you can see that this SSD happens to be um, an eight terabyte Samsung SSD. That's a lot of uh, terabytes for an SSD, but this came out of uh, the older build that we had. And we're gonna be putting that inside this one. This is a GTX 1070. And I think this is definitely an Nvidia branded card because it feels overly heavy for no reason. Been in operation for six years. And uh, we're gonna put this in there for now until uh, the newer cards come out, and I might switch to a Radeon, because I really don't like how large uh, the new NVIDIA cards are. Like, they're gigantic. This is a normal size card. You see, this is normal. This packed a lot of power back in the day, and it was a normal size card. And it did not require a whole gigantic amount of uh, heat sinks and fans and all that stuff. This was very, very adequate. And I decided to mount the RGB hubs on each side of the case right there. And it seems to be uh, looking okay. Uh, like I said, the the RGB fans that are hooked up to this hub, it's just a big huge mess. But using zip ties to tie everything down. So I did a little bit of wire management. Now when it comes to wire management, the one thing I want to warn you is when you wire mesh, you want to make sure that you don't wire mesh your cables too tight. Because if you do it too tight, you can damage the shielding on your cable. And you know, if you do that, you might run into uh, quite a few problems uh, later on down the road. Alright, so we powered it on. It does power on. It does work. This is what the inside of it looks like. Um, we are using an older video card that's like six, seven years old for the time being. Now initially, now this is something you guys want to pay attention to. Now, no matter if you're an experienced builder or not, things can go wrong. And uh, these little lights up here in the corner, one of them is uh, for the CPU, the RAM, the video card, and the boot. So, you know, one of those up there, look it up for the RAM. And it gave me a RAM indicator. So, little did I know, I just did it once over and I looked over everything twice. And it turns out one of the RAM sticks was actually popped up just a little bit. So I unplugged everything. And then when you unplug your computer, you want to hold down your power button for about five seconds after you unplug it to release any static charge. And then I started resetting all the RAM sticks again. And uh, that solved the issue. This is a slightly newer version of the BIOS, right? So you really don't have a um, a proper 1.0 version of the BIOS yet. All right, let's see what we get here. It, it just completely turned off. That was interesting. What are we, what are we having here? It's power cycling. All 
All right, so I was updating the BIOS and the things just turned off on me. Like this, that was weird. That is definitely interesting. That's not supposed to happen. So when you update your BIOS, it's supposed to go through and, um, you know, straight through, it takes maybe a few minutes and then it restarts and does this thing. What we're gonna have to probably do here is um, there is gonna be a jumper on the motherboard somewhere that will trip the BIOS and reset it. And um, there might be a button on the board actually. Let's see, yeah, clear CMOS, okay. Well, let's see if that works. We're gonna unplug the computer. That is bizarre. I'm gonna hold down the power button for a certain amount of seconds. Release any static. All right, here we go. And there is a clear CMOS button right here. Let's hold that down for a little bit. And uh, this is the type of stuff that you will run into when you buy a motherboard that just released literally a couple weeks ago. So if you guys run into any issues where your BIOS is just not cooperating, uh, there is a reset button or there's a jumper pin for clearing your BIOS. Uh, there's gonna be a little USB port right here that is for the BIOS, which is pretty standard. You usually see that in the back. And normally the uh, BIOS tool and so the BIOS will actually work fine with that. But apparently what you're supposed to do is turn the computer off completely, plug your flash drive in there, and it has to be a FAT32, and then make sure you use the BIOS renamer tool. And then you hold down this little button right here for like five seconds. And you'll start to see it blink. And when it's blinking, that means the BIOS is actually flashing you have to leave it plugged in for a good 10 minutes and let it flash. Then go back and check the back of it for 10 minutes afterwards. And uh, once it stops flashing, unplug the flash drive and turn your computer back on. And apparently that is how you flash the BIOS on this particular, particular motherboard. All right, so I cloned the drive. And in order for me to do this, it required both drives. So my user folders are in drive F. And I must say that this actually went, this process worked much better than what I expected it to. It actually booted up, it did not crash. Uh, I'm going to get all the drivers installed and then we're going to do some benchmarking and there it is. Alright, so here we go. We're going to show off uh, some of the lighting on this thing. Let's see if we can get this to focus here. Let's see what we get.
Apparently when you run a bench and you push the CP to its limits, it can go up to 95 degrees Celsius on the 7000 series uh, Ryzen, which is pretty crazy. That's To me, that's like overheating level. You can see right now, it's heading, it's heading up to 90 degrees Celsius here. You know, I do all my video editing on a 3950X Ryzen, and I'm not used to seeing the temperatures going up that high. That's pretty high. When you uh, don't be alarmed about the temperature, apparently, according to AMD, this is a normal temperature under stress. If you're really pushing this thing to its limits, it's supposed to get that hot for some reason. Like, I think that's nuts, but apparently that's, uh, that's a thing. Alright, we've got 19,565 points. I still use this benchmark a lot when I build computers. And quite often I see like newer computers hitting like 700 or 600 frames max, which is pretty cool. I'm just curious to see what this one gets. And I know the temps are actually looking pretty good for gaming, I guess. This is sticking around 50 degrees Celsius, that's not bad. And uh, what are we getting here? Remember, we're using an old video card still. We're using a GTX 1070. Six hundred and fifty-nine frames per second. No, no, it's, uh, max. Six hundred and fifty-nine frames. 0.3 frames per second max, which is the score I usually go by. Like the max frame, that's insane. Uh, the average frame rate is 350. Uh, 358. Uh, this is a six year old 1070. That's pretty uh, hilarious. I mean, if this thing had uh, all the bells and whistles of the new cards, I mean, it would be really worth upgrading to a new video card, to be honest. Alright, that's uh, pretty cool. So, there we go. We just built. Awesome PC. And once again, let's pull up the uh, it's AMD Ryzen 770-700X 8 core. 64 gigs of RAM. Pretty cool stuff. Alright, now that's how you build a PC. An AM5 PC. Stay tuned for more gaming episodes here. Uh, if you guys like retro gaming stuff, like subscribe. I have tons of videos.